Oh, hey YouTube, what's up guys? How are we doing today? Welcome back to the Gold Guy YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm challenging myself. It's like five o'clock and dark outside and I just decided, you know what? Today I'm gonna get the TS-185 running. I'm gonna do whatever it has to takes. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do whatever it, whatever it takes guys. I'm gonna get the bike running. Oh my gosh, I can't breathe. We're covered in smoke. <laughs> oh. bag of ebay parts i'm gonna start out the video by unboxing them and i'm probably gonna need everything in this bag to get the bike running so there we go gonna be using my trusty pakistani butterfly knife to open these bags up good thing this knife's pretty dull or my fingers would be missing all right, guys. Well, I don't know why I closed it because I'm about to open a ton of packages. This one is super light. Let's see what's in here. All right, whatever this was, was $21.14. And it's that big. And it weighs like maybe one ounce. So this is the new floats for my bike. For the TS-185 carburetor, as you guys saw, in my cleaning the carburetor video on that bike, the float was broken and there were just pieces hanging out in the bowl. We got some stickers too. OEM motorcycle, or OEM cycle. So thank you guys for sending me a float for $21. Let's open up this little envelope here. And it is the kill switch for the TS-185. If you're wondering, everything I'm opening today, I bought on eBay. And if you want, I will put links for these items in the description. And this one, can you guess what it is? Comment down below, what's in the bag? What is in the bag? Let's open it and the winner wins a free reply. I'll reply to you if you got the question right. Hopefully you didn't cheat and see what's in it and then comment because I'd be cheating. All right, Motion Pro. This is the clutch cable for the TS-185. That's what it looks like. The bags are getting a little bit heavier. Okay, and this one, we're definitely going to need to get the bike running, is the throttle and a hand grip for the other side there we go we've got the throttle cable and i already have the throttle cable so i'm going to not need this one but we still need the grip and we need this thingy so that's what came in this bag i'm gonna get that old cable working with this grip somehow Okay, we've got the front brake and the clutch lever. These look nice. Check them out. Gonna look clean. I wanted to get the most authentic looking levers I could find. I think these look nice and vintage and Japanese and I like how they look. There we've got the nice uni air filter. 
Let's see if she fits on the carburetor. I think it will. Oh, shite. It's pretty big, guys, but once you tighten it down, that fits nice, clamps down nice. All right, down to business. What do we got to do to get this bike running? Sometimes the easiest way to do something really cool is just to challenge yourself. Think of something that would be hard to do. Just do it. That's my little tip of the day. Let's get the TS-185 running. Number one, oil Z with an S. We got to check the oil in the two-stroke mixed tank and the transmission oil. So we've got to reinstall the carb. We got to put the float back in it, the new one back in it first, and then we'll be able to put it on the bike. Throttle cable, kill switch, gas situation. Gas tank is not ready yet. So I'm gonna have to inject the gas into the carburetor with a little bottle. I think that's all we know right now. So hopefully this is all I'm gonna have to do to get the bike running. But you guys always know how it is. There might be extra stuff. Might need to do a carburetor. Or a, might need to put a new spark plug in it. We'll see. Let's get to it. All right, guys, we got the parts unboxed. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Yeah, just kidding. We're not just unboxing parts. We got a lot of work to do on the bike. Let's get into it. I'm going to keep a running timer to see how long it actually takes me to get this bike running. So I've worked on it before. This is like the seventh video of this bike. It's crazy. I know I haven't started it yet. And it is 537 right now. Let's see. Can we get it done by seven o'clock? Maybe. One way to find out. Here is the new float. And, and here is the old one. Goes this way. There we go. There's the float. The bowl is going back on next. All right, new float is in. Let's get it on the bike. The old intake manifold is in pretty good shape, so I'm going to just reinstall it. Let's get a hose clamp on there. This one should fit. Perfect. Let's get this bad boy back where it belongs. Sometimes it can be hard to get these in, but tight is right guys you don't want any vacuum leaks please fit does it fit hell yeah it fits that was easy nice there filter fits, so I guess I can put this uni sticker on my toolbox. I know this isn't in order, guys, but carburetor is on the bike. So we gotta get the old throttle cable to work with this throttle. Uh, so, best way I can think to do that is that we gotta steal the end off of this cable and put it on this cable, and then obviously we, we gotta add a stopper on the end of it. Well, I hate to do this to a perfectly good cable, but it was super cheap on eBay and I need this piece. There we go. We've got the end. Nice. Then this piece. And there we go. Take three. Shit. Just melted it. I think I might have been overthinking this whole cable thing. I just welded onto the cable a little bit and it's super strong, not going anywhere. And check it out. Fits in the throttle perfectly. You can pull on it and it's not going anywhere. So I don't know if this is a long term solution, but for tonight, just getting the bike running, it'll work. First, let's get the kill switch on there and then let's get the throttle on there. Tighten up the throttle on this bad boy. And there we go. 
All right, now let's get the cable hooked up to the carburetor and the oil injectors. Let's get that through there and thread that in there. About half adjusted is usually what I like to do. Okay, let's test it out. We got the throttle working, guys. First, we've got to put the cable through the stopper, adjuster thing, whatever you want to call it. Get it threaded in down there. Okay. Now we just gotta find the end that goes in there. I have no idea where it is. I couldn't find the actual piece that goes on the end of this cable, so I just made my own. I think I got it, let's test it out. Check out that return, guys. It's not returning all the way, but I mean, that's pretty good. Alrighty. This kill switch is super simple. All we need is a ground and a power wire. Here are the wires from the old kill switch. Whew. I wish wiring was always that simple, guys. I'm gonna have to clean these wires up, but for now, this is good enough. There's the drain plug for the oil. I'm gonna take that bolt out and drain, let's drain it out and see what it looks like in there. You guys ready? I am, let's see. Oh, damn it. It's exactly what I did not want to see. Sludgy oil water stuff. Son of a bitch. Yeah, there's water in there, no doubt. Maybe we can try to flush it out with some new oil, though. All right, let's try this. There, we got some oil coming out. As long as we can get as much of that nasty old, if we even want to call it oil, as, as long as we can get most of that stuff out of there and then replace it with good oil, we should be good to go. So after looking at some forums and after looking at the oil that I have here, I've got 10W40 and some people say they actually use this type of oil in their transmissions. So I guess I'm gonna give it a shot. I don't have anything else. Some people use gear oil, like a thicker weight oil, but this is what I got and I think it's gonna work fine. So let's get it in here. It's better than no oil. After a quick Google search, I found out that it takes two cups or 500 milliliters of oil, which is about two cups. So there we go, that's two cups. So there is oil in the two-stroke mix tank, but I'm sure it's no good. Let's drain it out of there. All right, here's the hose. And there's the oil. Ah, damn. I can't really get that up in there at all. And then let's get some two-cycle oil in the oil tank. Alright. Oh, well guys, it's 11 o'clock at night now, which means I've been working on this bike for right around five hours. I've got no spark right now. And before you ask, yeah, the bike is in neutral. Uh, there's no clutch switch on the bike, so the clutch doesn't have to be in. Um, I swapped out the coil, didn't fix it. Tried a couple different spark plugs, didn't fix it. I'm thinking it might be the little CDI box here. I don't know. Uh, it's a little too late to be working on the bike right now. My girlfriend is mad at me for not being over at her house yet. I did everything I could tonight. I'll see you tomorrow and I'll try to get this thing running. <sighs> yep. Happy Monday morning.
working on the bike. I failed my own challenge. I couldn't get the bike running in just one night. Uh, well, couldn't get any spark on the bike, but I did discover something I want to show you guys. Check this out. So using my multimeter, I connected the leads to the two wires that are supposed to go to the ignition coil and check out what happens when I kickstart the bike. Nothing happens. <laughs> Let's fix these leads. See that? Get a ton of voltage. Ho 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 There's only one thing that can make me laugh like Santa Claus right now. Check it out. Hell yeah. Spark. Whew. So if you couldn't tell already, guess, comment down below what I had to do to get this thing sparking again. I definitely didn't expect it, but all right, comment down below. I'll give you guys a few seconds. Time's up, check it out. All I did guys, I changed the CDI. I had a spare one. Here's the one that was on the bike. I didn't think there was a problem with it because I was getting power from these wires going to the coil. And this is the coil that was on the bike originally. I put it back on, I swapped the CDI, and that's it. It's getting spark now. So I guess the problem was in the CDI. You know what that means? Let's start this b Oh yes, the time has finally come. Let's start this bad boy. See how many kicks it takes. mishap here. We might need a little bit of starting fluid. Oh my gosh, I can't breathe. We're covered in smoke. <laughs> oh. Guys, it started. I love that two stroke, that classic sound. Oh my gosh. We gotta get a little bit more ventilation in here before we can start this bad boy up again. It started and it ran somewhat decent. This bike was sitting outside for probably like 10 years at least. I think that's a good place to end the video guys. There's hope in this project, finally. So thank you guys so much for watching. This video was crazy to film and I had a lot of fun and I loved, oh my gosh, I love hearing that two stroke classic sound. I haven't heard that sound in a while. I've never even owned a two stroke before except for my bicycle engine kit if that even counts. Anyway guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to stay in the loop of, of uh, videos with this build series project and like the video, comment if you love that classic two stroke sound as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking in there with me. I'm sorry I didn't get any videos uploaded last week. It was finals week for school. And I just, I wanted to upload really badly, but I didn't have enough time. So here's a video for you. I hope you guys liked it anyway. I'll see you next time. Peace out.